OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here, and um, finally, I get to show you guys my real rig, the one that I normally use all the time. So what I've got here, I'm going to go through it little by little, tell you what each piece it is, how it's the signal's running, and how crazy this thing is to tune. It takes me days, but once she's set, complete nirvana. Okay, so let me show you. Here's how it all starts. Right up here. In this, this is my server, okay? This is something that I built, and it's it, every server is a computer. I don't care what anybody tells you, a server is a computer, that's it. So if you optimize it with uh, Linux, I don't recommend Microsoft or, or, or uh, OS of, of Apple OS. Use Linux, use a purpose-built uh, music software. You're gonna have a good a Sonic, it's gonna sound good. Use a linear power supply, which I have over here. Um, You'll read about it. I'll tell you more. But so, so it starts at the uh, server right here. It goes from the server down to the DAC. Okay, right here. In this case, the APL Hi-Fi DSDM Plus. Okay, and this is the DAC portion. You'll see that the phase is reversed because the preamp also reverses inverts phase. A lot of preamps do that. So you want to make sure that your preamp is not... If it is inverting phase, then you need to put it back. Okay, usually at the speaker, you swap the, the, the speaker cables. Okay, it goes from the DAC, it comes down to, well, first to the NAT audio preamp right here. And uh, this is a vacuum tube output. Um, very good uh, preamp. This is the magnetic. Okay, it comes out of the magnetic. You can ignore this thing. It's just storage, basically, right there. Um, okay, so we got the magnetic. And then it goes back to here, which is something that I had made for, uh, for the rig, which is a... Uh, four-way crossover. You see each one of those is a band. Okay, we got low which divides the, the sub. It's between the sub and the, and the woofer panel and then the low mid is between the woofer panel and the mid-range off to the side and then this one is between the mid-range and the tweeter and then that is um, the tweeter level right there. Um, let me see where that thing is set. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, and then you can see in there, you see all those cards that are in there? Uh, that, those are, there's four cards per channel because this is actually a differential balance circuit from the front to the back so it has negative signal positive signal and ground uh, so there's two signal paths for every single uh, uh, channel so that's why you see all those cards in there okay comes out of the crossover the crossover divides all the frequencies so that the amplifiers only amplify the frequencies that that particular driver is going to use so there's four amps that we use per side we use the Jeff Rowland 625S2, which is right there and right there. These are two channel amps, 320 watts per channel. Those power, one channel powers the subwoofer right here, the sub tower that you see. That is powered by uh, one channel of the Jeff Rowland. The other is this panel here, the main panel on the MagnaPan, the, the woofer. Okay, so that woofer is powered by the other channel. So the Roland powers these two puppies. Um, the next is the mid-range. This is the NAT Audio Magma. This use, utilizes a very special tube. This is a single-ended triode amplifier, otherwise known as SET, and this comes in at a whopping um, 100, 100, 100 watts. It's 100 watts of single-ended triode. Um, so this thing, I have it set on the low setting, which is like uh, 40 watts um, of single-ended triode, which is more than enough to power, if you look out over here, to power these mid-ranges, okay? So this tube is just on the mid-range only. That's what it's powering. And then up, if you look in back, you can see it here better, but right here is the AGD Vivace. That's a Class D. That's the latest cutting-edge technology of amplifier technology, and that powers the tweeter. So the ribbon tweeter is powered by this 100-watt uh, um, AGD Vivace. Actually, it's even more because the tweeters are 4 ohm, so this thing is more like putting 200 watts to the tweeter. Um, but we use it... Um, very sparingly and well. Um, so that is the rig. That's what we will be listening to. I still have yet to tune it a little bit more. I presume I'm going to be pushing these back a little bit. Um, I might put the Maggies back further in the corner. I'll be playing around to get the real ideal Sonic. Um, right now, all the broad strokes are finished. We're going to listen to it in a second, and you'll hear it sounds phenomenal. Okay, A lot of people would stop there, but I don't. I know how much further you can go, and you can the refinements are really what push it over the edge. So you'll see, right now we're gonna to listen to a quick piece and this is with all the broad strokes done, this is 90% of the way uh, that the rig will sound. Uh, and so let's check it out. They followed Joan Mark. She came riding through the dark No moon to keep 
keep her armor bright No man to get her through this dark and smoky night She said I'm tired of the war I want the kind of work I had before A wedding dress or something white to wear upon my swollen appetite. La -la -la, la -la -la, la -la -la, la -la -la.
because it is very hard to get a choir like that on a scale such as we just heard. Uh, you can get it right so it sounds like a choir and everything like that, but does it sound like you are in a cathedral? It certainly does here. It's huge. I mean, it's way bigger. The sound is bigger than the room is. I, I, if, if, if you're an audiophile, you'll know what I mean. The, the sonic image gets bigger than the walls in the room. It's really a, a unique sort of a experience. It's, it's, it, boundless is really what it feels like. So that is hard to recreate. Um, I'm not sure if you can get all that through the video, um, but it certainly is huge over here. It's cathedral size uh, and it's amazing. So um, just wanted to drop you in, uh, let you into the mix on what's been going on here. Kind of, we're not, I'm not completely uh, finished yet, but I will have this puppy tuned in and then we will put up some mics and we can do some comparisons. Once I have this rig fully dialed, then my intention is to start doing comparisons for you guys, like the cable comparisons and things like that, and and, and like isolation device uh, comparisons, because this rig is extremely revealing. It, it it does not hide a thing. Any little difference that happens, you hear it. Uh, so we will. I'll, I'll get it to that instrument level of dial where it's like medical equipment, and uh, we will hear every little change we make in the rig, and that'll be a lot of fun for you guys. So thanks for joining, and we'll see you.